it's been nerve-wracking watching the votes come in. This is one of the most contested elections in history. One thing we know, Joe Biden did not run away with the vote. Rarely has there been such a sharp distinction between the two candidates and their plans for America's future. However things ultimately fall, join me in the Economic War Room to learn what it may mean for your money, your livelihood, and your way of life. We know that we just went through a tumultuous election and there's a lot of consternation on both sides as the votes are coming in and being counted. Remember what uh, the Soviet dictator Stalin reportedly said? He said, it's not who votes that counts, it is who counts the votes. And sadly, that may be the case this year in this election, something we've got to watch out for. We're going to take a deep dive into the very insane way that we count our votes. And we're gonna see some very unusual irregularities that took place. Now, we had intended to bring white hat hacker Jekyll back to the war room today, but he's busy because he's got a lot to look at and a lot going on. We also were gonna bring Russ Ramsland. We're gonna have them on a future show. Russ is the one who warned us about Seidel and the way that they can flip votes electronically. And so we'll bring them back together and talk about them. But I talked to them and other experts in Washington and around the country this morning. And I got to tell you, this is unfortunately the very nightmare that we had warned you about. We've done a lot of shows on election integrity. We've done shows on um, playing for keeps and the memo and others. The left is out for blood and total victory. Now, it's clear. On election night, most of you may have gone to bed early enough that you see President Trump leading in a lot of states. It looked like he might be on his way to a solid victory. But states such as Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania have slow rolled the count. Why does it take so long? How can Florida with a huge population and Texas with a big population come up with here's our vote totals, even though those were considered contested states also? So it didn't take them that long to get the votes in, but those um, particular states, Arizona, Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, they've been very slow. Now, one example in the wee hours of the morning, and this is something I caught when I, you know, I stayed up late and I got up early and I was watching, and then all of a sudden you see President Trump with a solid lead in Michigan, and there's not that much vote left to count, then boom, Right there, 138,339 votes were dumped from Detroit. Now, that's not entirely unusual. Detroit's had some history of this, as has Philadelphia and Miami-Dade County and a few other places. But what happened here was most unusual for one thing. Take a look at this. This was a part of a tweet that Matt Walsh had put out. It shows uh, before the dump, 90.9% of the votes were in, Donald Trump has 2,200,902. Boom, instant drop. Now it's 93.8% in. But Donald Trump doesn't move one vote. Not one vote. All 138,339 votes go to Joe Biden. Now I want to tell you, that is not statistically possible. I mean, for all those who say the Republicans are science deniers, well, statistics is scientific. And if you're a statistician, it's virtually impossible that all of those votes, unless you'd segregated them for some reason, set them aside and say, oh, here's Biden votes. Whatever it is, it's nefarious. It's unacceptable and it needs to be investigated. It's not statistically possible. You know, not a human error that they put that. Not one kid who's, who says, my old man told me I had to vote for Biden, but I'm not doing it. Not one vote for Donald Trump. That's not possible. So don't be a science denier. This cannot happen without some kind of fraud. And yet, when Matt Walsh tweeted out a simple question about this, very simply, he says, how is that possible? Twitter came back and blocked his tweet from being liked 
or shared. Why is that? Well, it's not a surprise. We know that the Hunter Biden laptop from the New York Post, one of the most respected uh, his, histories of a newspaper going all the way back to Alexander Hamilton, the fourth largest circulation of a newspaper in America, uh, genuine reporting on the Hunter Biden laptop with you know gr great integrity all the way through, and, and anybody who's looked at it knows that they reported fairly. They blocked them from Twitter just for putting out truth because they didn't want the message out. Likewise, Twitter doesn't want the message out that there's a possibility that there's election fraud. You can't tell me when the, there's such razor thin margins that there's no potential for, for a miscount. Even if it's not fraudulent, if it's just a casual miscount, we're going to have recounts, I guarantee it, in several of these states that are close enough that could swing the election either way. So don't be dis surprised and don't be discouraged. I want you to understand the very same media that told you that, uh, that Biden was up by 10 points is now telling you, oh, there's no path to victory for Trump. It's not true. I also want to tell you that the left is not happy either. Why? They didn't get the blue wave. They didn't get Senate control. They may have had losses in the House. And this may be enough to keep Joe Biden, if he gets to the White House, from becoming too far captive of the left. But it's not over. It's still possible for President Trump, especially if they dig in to irregularities like I just shared. So I want you to know the polls were lying to you before, and the media may be lying to you now. There's an Economist magazine, and I picked this up, and I, I just did a screenshot of it, because here they were yesterday morning, the day of the election, forecasting the U.S. elections, and they said Joe Biden has a 97% chance of winning the Electoral College. How could they be so confident? These were the same polls that were telling you that Biden was up 10 to 17 points. I'm not kidding. In Pennsylvania, up by 10 points, and somebody on the ground, an honest reporter in Philadelphia said, I just don't see how that's possible because I talked to so many people. I just don't see a big Biden wave, especially after his fracking debacle, saying he wouldn't ban fracking, then he would ban fracking, then he would. Yet all of that caused Pennsylvania to turn away from being a solid blue state. Now, there's some good news. We have the Supreme Court. Uh, we may uncover a lot of the cheating because it was so blatant. And even if Biden pulls out a win, he may have to move a little bit to the center. It's going to be difficult. It's not going to be easy. But for once, we do have a leader who's willing to fight this. So we're going to take a break. And when we come back, we're going to look into what may lie ahead, regardless of who is ultimately declared the winner of this election. <music> Welcome back. When you see this, I don't know if the votes will have changed or not, because sometimes people archive it and watch it later. But I know this, the election is not over. The votes may be counted, uh, may go to the courts, they may be doing recounts, that is such razor thin margins. Now remember, the Transition Integrity Project talked about this. You know, the Transition Integrity Project, we featured that in our episode, Playing for Keeps. Go back and watch that. Download that battle plan and read what they said. We are now in the fourth scenario, what they called a narrow Biden win. And it talks about all of the machinations and things that they expect from the Trump campaign and they expect from the Biden campaign. Now, I want to give you my take 
on some of the post-election issues, regardless of who the winner is. I don't believe that we're done with violence and insurrection. In fact, the far left is preparing. If the Trump team contests the election, does recounts, goes to the Supreme Court, as he mentioned in his speech, uh, and fights this, they plan to take to the streets with violence. They haven't done it yet because nothing uh, has triggered it yet. They haven't gotten the official word yet. But I have no doubt that a color revolution is underway. There's good news. Good news is, is that they didn't capture all of the government. They're not going to be able to put uh, Puerto Rico and D.C. as states. They're not going to be able to pack the courts if the Senate holds for the Republicans. And I think that's good for the Constitution. But these far leftists are all geared up. They've been flown around the country. They put piles of bricks in locations in big cities around the country ready for violence. And we know it. It won't be the Trump team that is out violently responding. They'll wave flags and they'll show up and they'll declare their patriotism. But there is this far left element and that violence and insurrection and color revolution is not going away. So you gotta go back and watch that episode as well. We had Rich Higgins and we talked about it and we put a citizen's guide for dealing with these kind of things. That's one, one issue, domestic issue. A second domestic issue is election integrity. We had Russ Ramsland here. We have a whole website devoted to this, a web page. It is uh, economicwarroom.com slash my vote. Go back and watch that. It was almost prophetic telling you what could happen. And unfortunately, we may be seeing that happen before our very eyes. We've got to be prepared to address this and clean it up. That is a challenge and a fight for the economic war room that we're going to have to take forward. Another problem is the deep state. If President Trump wins, I have no doubt he will attempt to clean out the deep state, fire the FBI director and everything else. But if Biden is president, there are a lot of executive powers that can be taken that he will likely take that will cover up, hide, obscure, and stop the look into the deep state. He will do his best to cover up the laptop. He'll do his best to cover up the malfeasance of spying on the Trump administration. So we've got to be prepared for that. Another thing we have to be prepared for is the war on free speech. When Twitter and Facebook think that they can stop legitimate public discourse, I don't know how we're going to do it, but we've got to make Twitter and Facebook pay. Here's the concern. What they're going to do if Biden is elected, they will go and, say, and, and be threatened with breaking them up. And it, the threats coming from the left of breaking them up are not going to end their power. In fact, it will enhance the left's power. They'll say, we'll break you up, but you have to do this. You have to squelch free speech, hate speech, they'll call it. So we've got to be prepared for that. And we have to be prepared regardless. We will see a divided America. Now here's some good news. Trump still can win this election and we will have a divided America. Why do I say that's good news? Is I believe that, that, that the path of patriotism is what can bring us together. Uh, the Trump administration put in plans to bring back to the schools patriotic teaching and education and so forth. We need that. That's what brings us together. A worship and love of God brings us together. Love of family brings us together. You notice on the far left, they want to tear down God, they want to tear down patriotism, and they want to tear down family. What do they want to put in its place? A nanny state. And I'm very concerned about this. We, we have got to address, if COVID was just one example of the nanny state, where they were even saying in California, hey, you know, at Thanksgiving, you can only have a few people over and, and uh, you have to wear your mask in between bites and you, you have to clean, the, uh, sanitize the bathroom after anybody uses it and you can only gather outside. Even Alec Baldwin said that's crazy. And it is, but that is part of the nanny state progressive takeover of America. And there may be future pandemics that come that we'll have to be prepared for. So we've got to worry about that. Now those are the domestic, uh, domestic issues. We also have foreign issues. National debt is going up regardless, Trump or Biden, it's gone up. China is still a threat. They're planning to put a digital currency electronic payment platform in place to remove the US dollar. Now, you may not have seen this because it was election day, but China, the government, pulled the Ant 
IPO, the initial pub public offering for Ant Group. We did a show on this. You can go back and watch it, but they pulled it. Why? Because I believe it's a part of their government takeover of the Ant Group to use that technology in their DCEP platform. And that's scary. The good news, they pulled it, so Americans aren't funding it at this moment. Bad news is I believe they have intention to use it against us. We also have worries about cyber warfare. We have an upcoming show uh, with Robert Douglas that's going to be fantastic in going into cyber warfare and how you can protect yourself, your company, and so forth. But cyber warfare is going to be a big issue, regardless of who's president. Space, the space race, also a big issue. We talked about that with Lieutenant General Stephen Quast. And China is right now on the dark side of the moon, and they are planning to beat us in the space race. While we've been focused on the election, they've been funding their space adventures. And then, of course, we can't forget radical Islam, which has been silent here in the United States for a while, but it is rearing its ugly head in Europe. And you'll see there have been multiple uh, terror attacks recently in Europe from radical Islam. Again, pushed off the headlines because the media doesn't want you to hear about it, number one, and number two, because it doesn't fit the narrative. And we know who is stronger, who would be stronger. As long as President Trump was president, uh, radical Islam seemed to have been going back into the background, but it will rear its ugly head going forward. These are all big issues. You need the economic war room because we're going to walk through every one of them and tell, tell you how you can do something about it for your family, to protect yourself, to protect your money, your investments, but also so that you can learn what you can do to help protect our nation. Now we're going to take another break. When we come back, we're going to check in with my good friend, Dave Bratt, former congressman, uh, dean of the Liberty University Business School. So stay tuned. We'll be back with Dave Bratt. I'm sure you've seen the riots and violent protests going on all around the country with calls for defunding the police. This is not a random act based on one man's death. It's a well-funded and coordinated operation and their goal is to disrupt, demoralize and deny. America is under attack by an insurgency syndicate and they're on the offensive. I want to make sure that your family and your friends are prepared because we're near a tipping point. Here's a quote from Rich Higgins, the former director of strategy at the National Security Council. Not since the Civil War have we faced an insurgency and resistance movement with the capacity, capability, and very real potential to fundamentally change the structure of our republic. Our team with Rich Higgins' unconstrained analytics team have prepared a very special economic battle plan that includes a comprehensive citizen's guide for response. Simply visit economicwarroom.com forward slash battle plans and click episode 106, a citizen's guide for response link. It's the only one in red. And like all our battle plans, it's absolutely free to download. You'll get powerful information about how to protect your family and you can share it with those you care about. Don't wait. The domestic insurgents are not giving up. Download your free economic battle plan at economicwarroom.com forward slash battle plans. You're one of the small ships that we talk about all the time, and you're critical to help save our great nation. Welcome back. We brought back to the Economic War Room our good friend Dave Bratt, former congressman, dean of the business school at Liberty University. Dr. Bratt, welcome back. Hey, thanks, Kevin. Always great to be back on your show. Yeah, thank you. It's a strange time. I mean, you, you, yeah. you, know, you, you watch an election happen. You've been watching those a lot the past decade or so. Uh, yep. What are you seeing? What are your thoughts? Um, who are you talking to? What are you finding out? Yeah, well, it's just uh, due to the COVID, there's just so many new variables in play. Last night for my seat, Nick Freitas was up 20 points uh, in 7th District of Virginia, and no one knew. It wasn't explained. They were just counting uh, votes taken that day. And so everyone's make doing the math based on that. Now it turned out it all closed. It's within 200 votes. Then they just found 20,000 votes that uh, were misreported in Henrico County. Uh, they have absentee votes uh, miscounted up in spots. Let's stop a second. 
it just found 20, how do, how do you just find 20,000 votes? Does that sound reasonable? No, no, it doesn't sound reasonable. In Rico County, uh, the, uh, the head of the, the, the vote, I forget the, the name for it, but, uh, they informed the campaigns. There's 20,000 votes that uh, were just were missed. It was a difference between 70,000 and 50,000. Uh, 50,000 came in. 70,000 should have come in. How and do you so just miss those? I see right? crazy. Yeah, that's well. That's what we're going to find out in all these cases. And I just use that as a microcosm because that's just one race in a fairly rational uh, area, uh, but. That's what we're going to be chasing across the whole country for the probably a couple of weeks now, I would guess. That's crazy. And it determines who controls the House, who controls the sure. Senate. So what are yep. you hearing on that end? Does it look like the Republicans will keep the Senate? Yeah, I'm thinking we hold uh, at least a two seat uh, advantage, given what's out there right now. And the House, uh, you know, fairly close to even. It doesn't matter that much whether it's five up or down one way or the other. But we'd obviously prefer five new seats uh, to get more representatives for their states in there. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the important thing is holding that Senate. Otherwise, uh, we were facing all sorts of dire consequences with court packing and uh, bringing down the filibuster and all that. I, I think most of your listeners are familiar with all that. Yeah, no, no D.C., uh, no D.C. state, no Puerto Rico state. <clears throat> right. No, Absolutely. No removing the Electoral College and those sorts of yep. things. Right. Yeah. Huge. Huge. Yeah. So hopefully we win the presidency still. There's there's some new breaking news in Michigan. And, you know, so there's still some hope out there. And so uh, keep your fingers crossed and pray like crazy. Yeah. But regardless, I and, and I agree with you, I, I, there's a lot of counting to be done. And even if it were seen as a narrow <laughs> Biden win, there, there'll be a recount. It will be demanded yeah. a recount when you have 20,000 yeah. votes separating. They're going to count those yeah. ballots again. Right. But on the House, let's talk about that for a second, because that's that's your house. Uh, yeah. um, we were told early on on yeah. Fox News, we were told that yeah. Fox said that they were going to uh, Dems were going to take 15 to 25 seats yeah. on election night. They called it just like that. And that yeah. hasn't seemed to materialize. In fact, the Republicans may pick up seats, right? Yeah, well, that's right. And Fox News, boy, their track record and reputation is taking a hit on all sorts of fronts. The criteria they're using for uh, making the calls uh, is just completely irrational, not systematic. And uh, you know, that, I, I think it's more than just an accounting of the politics here now. Uh, this country is going to have to get serious about major institutions, right? I mean, we now have evidence the FBI was corrupt, the CIA was corrupt, our big tech are corrupt. They shut down a tweet of Trump last night after saying something less provocative than what Biden said. Uh, these six firms have a market cap bigger than all of Europe combined. Uh, then you throw in the systematic bias of all the mainstream media and you throw in all the polling uh, and th the Republican apparatus just doesn't seem to get any of this. The, the leadership is doing anything to prepare an alternative information space, right, for a crisis situation. If, if any of those folks just decide on a whim to go negative, uh, we're at a total loss and the American people lose their republic yeah. instantly. And I think and, and lucky they didn't abuse it more yesterday. I'm, I'm shocked they didn't. I think it's important to remember that the same media outlets that are so ready to call Arizona and really the whole election right. were yeah. the same ones that told us that Biden was going to win between 10 and 17 yeah. points. <laughs> The polling right. that they were producing was so bad, yeah. so irrational, so wrong. And yet now they're telling us so it's all over. Be discouraged. Don't don't yeah. hang in there. Don't contest whatever. So yep. you're and, right. and, and, and it's the same people that said Trump is a Russian foreign intelligence asset when China is our chief threat, which they never mentioned. And then they the, the New York Post, Post story on the Biden laptop was an election turner. If that thing would have come out a month earlier, right, and, and shame on Bernie and uh, Pocahontas for not breaking that news and having a pillow fight instead of doing their duty as citizens, uh, when they, I'm sure they knew that was there. Oh, yeah. uh, but that, that uh, you know, Biden's probably out within six months to a year anyway, right? And then that laptop is not going in. away, though. No, it, it, and, and it will be explored and it yeah. shows criminal activity. Oh, 
criminal activity by Joe and receipts. The receipts and the bills uh, are, are paid, and it's, it's sitting right there. Well, we're facing a divided America no matter what. If, if Biden yep. takes the White House, it's a divided America. If Trump right. takes the White House, and that's obvious. When you have 100 miles of cars lined up with flags and Trump signs right. on them right. in Arizona, it's yep. obvious that there is a strong contingent ready to stand up for the traditional values. So yep. my question is, how are we going to bring America back together through all of this? Yeah, well, uh, my proposition has been fairly straightforward. I wrote a book years ago. It wasn't a, a New York Times bestseller, but the thesis was that the Judeo-Christian tradition produced uh, everything good that came after it. It produced the rule of law. It, it gave us Constantine and then uh, gave us Madison, James Madison, the architect of our constitution. It, it founded all the great universities. It gave us free markets. Adam Smith uh, was in the Protestant camp up in Scotland, uh, made us rich beyond comprehension. All that came out of the Judeo-Christian Tradition, a tradition which today you cannot mention in public, uh, or you risk uh, being attacked, losing your job. Uh, it's the equivalent of putting a Trump sign up in your yard right now. 22% yep. of Republicans, uh, by the way, said they're comfortable expressing uh, their support for the current president of the United States of America. That's And so where's the threat coming from, right? Where's That's, the threat coming from? That is frightening. Well, and the other yeah. thing that we're doing together is we're helping yeah. people align their investments with their yes. values, putting their money where their values are yes. uh, and by our advisor training program at Liberty. And so right. you need to go to economicwarroom.com slash advisor and nominate yep. your financial advisor for that. We believe in patriotic investing. We believe in right. free markets. We believe in, in truth, justice, and the American way, and all the good things yep. you're doing, Dave, at Liberty. Yep. Fantastic. Raising up, training a new generation of uh, young people. And, and also, together, we're training a new generation of financial advisors to help people right. weaponize their money to take this country back. Yep. So, and and, and I, I'll, I'll just say on that, Christians have gotten a little soft and passive. Uh, in their teaching slightly, but uh, there's nothing wrong with loving your country and loving your family and aiming your investments to protect the things that you love. Uh, and so uh, our tradition is a great one and you've done tremendous work uh, setting us up at Liberty University. And I hope everyone does take that practical step because unfortunately it does take power and resources uh, to win in this very fallen world. And so we need to align trillions of dollars to the good guys and to the good ideas and toward the faith and the church uh, and the investments that follow those values. No question. Thank you so much, Dave. Hey, and for you audience, you got to get educated. Don't drink the media Kool-Aid. Don't believe, you know, 97 percent chance Biden will win like The Economist said. Go to economicwarroom.com download our battle plans. We'll have one for this episode and every episode, and you can learn what you can do to make a difference as a small ship. Remember, what we see as a marketplace, our enemies view as a battle space. This is Kevin Freeman from The Economic War Room.